Hello everyone. Today on this National Cancer Awareness Day, we shall be discussing on organ specific cancer care. And we have with us our specialist, Dr. Anil De Cruz, Director Oncology Services at Apollo Cancer Center, and also the president of Union International of Cancer Control at Geneva. He comes with over three decades of experience in the field of head and neck cancer surgery. Welcome to this live session, Doctor. Thank you very much, Nia. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you. The first question is, as cancer is evolving in last few decades, what are the new inventions which will be available in cancer care in future? So there have been a lot of inventions in the last couple of decades. When I started my career as a young surgeon, 30 years later, I can see a paradigm shift in the way we treat a lot many cancers today. Let's look at imaging. We have much better imaging today. We have high resolution CT scans, MRI scans, PET scans that gives us accurate delineation of the extent of tumor and can also help us to response assess after treatment, uh, which was very, very difficult in, in, in the years gone by. Look at pathology. We now have what is known as immunohistochemistry, molecular markers, so you take a bit of tumor, we can run it through a battery of tests, we know which is the driver of mutation and that helps us to target chemotherapy for our patients. Uh, surgery has improved, gone are the days when we did huge cuts to get out a tumor. We now do laparoscopic keyhole surgery, the robot has come in a big way. In my speciality, we do the laser resections of a vocal cord. In the old days, we would either radiate the larynx, that's the voice box, or remove the tumor by cutting through from the outside. But now we can do it endoscopically. Medical oncology has changed. That's chemotherapy. We have more and more targeted drugs. Targeted drugs that hit on the specific a uh, specific genetic abnormality of the tumor. So it's very targeted just on the tumor. The, the whole side effects uh, decrease. We have immunotherapy, which today is called the fourth arm of cancer. So things are changing. And I think one of the best uh, advances has come in the field of radiotherapy. We have more precise methods of targeting the tumor and uh, the proton therapy, which is an absolute uh, revolution in the way we treat. So I quickly tell you about proton. Conventionally, we would treat cancer with uh, either photons or electrons. So you have a beam coming off a machine that hits the tumor and there's an exit beam. However much you target precision, there is some side effects to surrounding tissues. Very simply, proton is a heavy ion. It goes into the tumor and decays. There is no exit beam. Side effects are much less. Where do we use this? Kids. Because if you give radiotherapy, changes in surrounding tissues uh, predisposes them to a second cancer, radiation-induced cancer, many years later. That's much less with the proton uh, therapy. Critical areas, if I have to radiate between the eyes, I don't want the ray, rays to fall here and there where they're very critical structures. Proton again uh, comes in very, very handy. So we've changed. Uh, where are we going to go from here? We probably have more precision oncology, personalized medicine, where everybody will not be treated the same way. We will be able to personalize our approach to our patient. Take out a bit of tumor and putting it very simply, understand the biology of the tumor and say Mr. X will have this kind of treatment, Mrs. Y will have this kind of treatment and that would help us triage rather than treat everybody the same way. Other advances such as artificial intelligence and various other things will come, they all work in progress and I'm sure in the next decade or so there will be still much, much more changes. We move on to the second question. What is organ specific cancer care and how it benefits for the patients treated by organ specific cancer care specialists? So another very, very important, uh, very important uh, 
uh, question that you asked me, Neha. Usually when people ask us about advances in cancer care, it's all about high technology, costly innovations, uh, which are good. They make treatment more precise, but if they do also affect outcomes, but they're not the only thing that improves outcome. A simple strategy of having specialists treat a particular cancer results in much better outcomes. Now, I'll give you an example. Say I'm doing a complex surgery like a pancreas surgery or I'm doing a complex surgery like a lung resection. If it's done by someone who's specialized in lung surgery, outcomes are much better than if it's done by a community oncologist. So for simple surgeries, you can go to your general surgeon, you can go to a community oncologist, but slowly we have noticed that people who go to specialist outcomes are better. It's not only outcomes, even the choice of treatment can be better. I'll give you an example, one or two examples, maybe one from my speciality, one from some other speciality. Let's presume someone has a rectal growth. Now, usually in the old days, we would remove the rectum and the patient would have an artificial stoma on the abdominal wall through which he would have uh, stools and other things coming out. Now, a specialist who operates a colorectal specialist, the amount of patients in whom you can avoid this stoma is much higher than if it's done by a general oncologist. So just to tell you that outcomes are better, and then getting the finer procedures are much better. My speciality of head and neck, you have a vocal cord cancer. Normally people would either operate, like I said earlier, from outside or send for radiotherapy. I'm tuned to laser surgery. Single daycare procedure, put the patient under anesthesia, put the scope in, get in the laser machine, I can remove this little cancer through the mouth, what we call the peroral route, I'm able to cure the patients with upwards of 95% success, avoid radiotherapy which goes for six weeks and the patient is fine. These fine treatments to improve survival, outcomes and offer our patients better treatment comes with speciality. And it's not my assessment that speciality care is better. There are reams and reams of publications to show that outcomes are much better with speciality. And as I tell everybody, it's not only the machine, but the man behind the machine. And that's an old age. The man behind the machine is as important, if not more, than the machine itself. So, Doctor, in the current scenario and accessibility to new modalities of treatment, has the quality of life improved? for the cancer patients? Of course, there's no doubt about this. In fact, that's another paradigm shift in the way we treat. Again, when I was younger, we would treat and we would only focus on outcomes, survival. Today, we are not doing that. A second indicator is there, which is called quality of life. So if I had to give someone radiotherapy and I had to cure the patient, if the patient post radiotherapy is going to have dry mouth, brittle teeth, jaw changes, skin changes, patient may be cured, but the quality of life is affected. So a lot of our advances today is to improve the quality of life of our patient and patients demand it. Uh, breast cancer, another very, very common cancer. Again, 15 years back, the breast was removed of every lady. But today, we are able to save the breast in more than half the patients depending on the stage that they come. Even if they come with advanced cancers, we give them chemotherapy first, shrink the tumor, conserve the breast. So yes, quality of life is improving both in terms of organ preservation as importantly in side effects of treatment. So our patients definitely have a much better quality of life and it's one of the very important indices today that we counsel our patients with and we are judged as oncologists at the end. So it's not only survival but quality of life as well. 
What is the message you would like to share to the oncologist and to the cancer patient on this National Cancer Awareness Day? A very, very simple message. Cancer is preventable. It's habit related. Please control your habits. That's tobacco, alcohol. Have a good diet. These are very, very important uh, in cancer control. We'll be able to control maybe half our cancers because tobacco related cancers are right up there, particularly in our country. Head and neck cancers are 25% of our cancers. Lung cancer is again another 10. So we'll be able to control. So prevent your cancers. Second, be aware and not scared. If you are aware and you have the warning signs of cancers, when you come to your doctor, 90% success rate with less treatment for the majority of cancers. Simple studies that we have done and as an oncologist, it's very frustrating to see that 90% of our countrymen come with advanced cancers. I understand their socio-economic constraints that don't allow our patients to come at time. But two studies I did when I was director at the Tata Hospital at two time points in my career and we noticed that very often patients go and consult their doctor but the doctor delay. So for example, someone with a lymph node, very commonly treated as tuberculosis by uh, family practitioners when actually it's a cancer. And the patient then just comes three months later with more advanced disease. So I think the second important message for you all is awareness. Patients, population should know what are the warning signs of cancer. And doctors in practice should know when to refer to a, a, a speciality center. And my third message, if God forbid any of your patients or anybody in the family gets a cancer, send to the right specialist in that organ. That is probably the most important message that I want to give you. So I am a surgical oncologist by training, but about 28 years of my life, I have dedicated only to head and neck cancers. So I am trained to do a breast surgery, I am trained to do an abdominal surgery, but I won't because I believe my colleagues who may be junior to me but specializing in that kind of line will have much better outcomes. And I feel the same if someone else does a head and neck and doesn't come to a head and neck specialist, outcomes are inferior. So prevent, be aware for early detection and choose your specialty center and doctor carefully for your treatment. These are my three messages to you on today, the National Awareness Day for Cancer. Thank you, Doctor, for joining this session. Dear viewers, if you have any questions related to this topic, please drop your queries in the comment box and we'll address it to Dr. Anand Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you very much.